Occasionally, my ears were utterly deafened by a single fiendish crashing burst of frame. Then, incessant hissing gave me the sense of hundreds of pound weights rushing down at incredible speed, one after the other. Or a dud shell rounded with a short, heavy, ground-shaking thump. Shrapnels burst by the dozen, like dainty crackers, shook roost their little bars in a dense crowd, and the empty casings rasped after they were gone. Each time a shell rented anywhere across, the earth flew up and down, and metal shards drove themselves into it. It's an easier matter to describe these sounds than to endure them, because one cannot but associate every single sound of frying steel with the idea of death, and so I huddled in my horror in the ground with my hand in front of my face, imagining are the possible variants of being hit. I think I have found a comparison that captures the situation in which I and all the other soldiers who took part in this war so often found ourselves. You must imagine you are securely tied to a post being menaced by a man swinging a heavy hammer. Now the hammer has been taken t back over his head, ready to be swung. Now it's creeping the air towards you on the point of touching your scar. Then it's struck the post and the sprint hours are frying. That's what it's right to experience heavy sharing in an unexposed position. Luckily, I still had a bit of that subliminal feeling of optimism. It'll be alright that you feel during a game, say, and which, while it may be quite unfounded, still has a soothing effect on you. And indeed, even this sharing came to an end, and I could go on my way once more, and this time with some urgency.